Hey, Sean McElroy here with our AutoLine exclusives, where we get to dive deep into topics on the automotive industry. Joining me today is Dan Singleton, CEO of Transient Plasma Systems. Dan, thanks for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Sean. Hey, Dad, back in June of last year, we featured your plasma ignition system on our AutoLine daily program. I got to tell you, we got a lot of great feedback from our viewers. And so we just wanted to follow up with you guys and see how things are going. And so, you know, for those of us or for those of those who don't remember what plasma ignition is, could you go through that with us a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sean. And yeah, it's good to see you again. Um, yeah, it's been an exciting uh, period since then. So um, we were talking about our plasma ignition system then and how we were trying to advance it towards commercialization. So let me remind your viewers what it what it is. Um, so it's an advanced ignition system um, which allows automakers to run combustion modes that uh, are, for example, much leaner, more dilute, say with EGR, much more efficient combustion modes that you wouldn't be able to run with a standard spark ignition system. Um, what our technology does is it uses extremely short, uh, tens of nanosecond long uh, high voltage pulses to ignite the mixture. Uh, it uses different chemistry and physics than a traditional uh, spark would. So a traditional spark, you can think of it almost like you're sitting and holding uh, a match to the fuel air mixture, trying to get it to go and it's causing molecules to collide and uh, eventually will start a combustion reaction, but it's actually a pretty slow process. With our plasma, it's a low temperature plasma, um, and because the chemistry is faster, we actually accelerate electrons uh, across the fuel-air mixture, break the bonds apart, so for example, oxygen becomes two atomic oxygens that react much more quickly. And because that process is faster, we can ignite much more difficult to ignite mixtures. Very interesting. Now, I'm wondering, how would this differ from, say, a traditional spark ignition? Mm -hmm. So a traditional spark ignition, you're basically trying to get the high voltage onto the spark plug. You're slowly ramping up that voltage until it breaks down across the gap. Ours is different. We send the pulse looking like what we want it to look like, which is very short and very tall. And we send that across the gap. And our goal is not to get a breakdown. We just want a very fast electric field across the gap. Um, and so to do that, um, we actually use a similar form factor to Spark. Whereas right now in a modern car, you'd have a coil on plug, a coil sitting on top of each plug. We put our very fast high voltage switching, it's just electronics, um, inside of uh, uh, basically right above the spark plug. So you just pull out the existing uh, spark ignition system and replace it with our electronics instead. So it's a drop-in replacement, essentially. Yeah, and that's huge for anybody that would adopt a system like this where you're not having to make huge development changes to bring yep. the technology in. Exactly, and yeah. And, and one thing I remember from uh, when we had you guys last time is just the way that the ignition front looks like compared to a spark plug. It, yeah. I, I would almost describe it as like an electronic web that kind of shoots out. Is, is that how you're getting the most efficient burn with this process? Yeah, it's a really good question. So there's two aspects of our technology that uh, give us an advantage over traditional ignition. Um, the one you're referring to, the, the plasma, which you can see on our website, um, for example, at tpsignition.com, um, the plasma actually distributes volumetrically. So you have the potential to get multiple sites of ignition simultaneously. So you get a benefit just from that. For example, uh, aircraft engines, internal combustion engines and small planes already have two spark plugs, which makes them more efficient. So just having multi-point ignition is an advantage. And then the second piece of it is that chemistry I described at the beginning. And because that chemistry is faster, we can ignite a mixture that is normally too difficult to ignite because the process is slow to ignite it. And then you were talking about a really fast ignition. As we know, uh, different loads on the engine will create more emissions or less or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, would you be able to, like, say, in a high load position, maybe even fire that multiple times or in the same amount of time that a regular spark plug could only fire one time? Yeah, absolutely. So we can fire very quickly. When we first started developing this technology, 
um, and actually published the first papers on it. This was kind of like 2006, 2007. Um, there was a paper published actually with Nissan. Um, and in that paper, we were just using a single pulse. But since then, as we developed the technology to be more efficient, more compact, more cost effective, we also added capability. So we can deliver, say, 10 or 20 pulses at a very fast repetition rate. And what that allows you to do is to build up the that plasma that we've been talking about. So you can actually build it up over a short amount of time and make it more effective. Oh, very cool. And, uh, you know, you mentioned kind of the early days of this. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how did you even get into this? Uh, you know, what got you into plasma ignition? Yeah. So um, I am not the inventor of, uh, of this approach. So it's been researched for decades. Um, and uh, there are many researchers um, around the world looking at all the different uses of these very fast high voltage pulses. So I came to it um, through my PhD work at uh, the University of Southern California. My PhD advisor had been developing it um, for, as I mentioned, decades. When I showed up, um, I was trying to figure out where I could help and what I was excited about. And we were actually doing tests with the uh, United States Navy um, at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey on some aircraft engines. And I was new learning, seeing what the other PhD students were doing. And I said, guys, this works really, really well. Uh, why isn't this commercialized? And they said, well, you know, it's traditionally pulse power. The technology that this is based around uh, comes from the military. It's very large, high energy devices. Uh, they're not very reliable. Um, they're very expensive. And I said, OK, well, that gives me something to work on. Um, and so we actually started focusing on what is happening in the world of solid state high voltage switching, these really fast switches that you need to make a pulse that's 10 nanoseconds long. And it was just the perfect timing, a lot of luck um, as well as hard work from, from my colleagues um, and others uh, to take those high voltage switches and put them in a device that's now compact, cost effective, extremely reliable. So it was just kind of the perfect storm of all that that, that came together. Very cool. So kind of give us a, an update today. What are you guys uh, doing right now? How is uh, the plasma ignition come along? Yeah, so we've been focused um, since we really started drilling down on this in 2014. We needed to first demonstrate that this was something different, right? So when you go to an automaker and you say, I have a new ignition system, there's been a, a long history of things that aren't exactly real, right? And so we had to say, okay, yeah, we did all these uh, demonstrations in our labs, but now let's go demonstrate um, with others, basically outside validation. So we worked with national labs like Sandia National Labs, uh, Combustion Research Facility in Livermore in California, and Argonne National Labs in Chicago. We had uh, demonstrations with them, published papers, that got the attention of automakers. And so then they reached out and said, okay, now we want you to test in our engines. Um, and so since 2014 and 15, we've been doing a lot of demonstrations, working with the automakers in every, everyone has a different strategy, different combustion strategies, different ways of using it. You mentioned, you know, at different loads and things, there's different um, emissions, there's a different way you can do trade-offs between emissions and power and everyone's using it differently. And so we did all these demonstrations and are continuing to do so. Um, but now we have enough traction that people understand what it can do, that it's real, we have data published. Um, and so now the focus is how do we put it in a form factor where they can actually adopt it in the auto industry. And so since I've talked to you, that's what our focus has been. We have um, outside investment now through a venture capital firm, Kairos Ventures. Um, we've taken that money and put it into putting the technology into a package and trying to make it cost effective so that it can be adopted and, and pay for itself uh, in fuel savings in about 18 months. So that's been our focus and that's where our progress has been since I saw you. We're, we have smaller packages and we're working on getting the cost down so that we can actually um, get it into the hands of automakers. Well, that's awesome. And can you give us like an idea of some of the benefits that you've seen in your engines compared to maybe a more traditional one? Yeah. Yeah. So the story of how our technology fits in is really the story of how advanced ignition fits in, which is, as you know, automakers have been 
trying to squeeze more and more efficiency out of combustion engines for years. And they're used to seeing sort of a one or 2% gain in fuel efficiency. It's like a big deal now, if you can add a little technology and get that. And so then the conversation has also turned to electric vehicles, right? Are people gonna be investing in combustion engines? And the way we see it is, and we're excited about electric vehicles, but the adoption just isn't gonna be that fast. There's no jumping ahead to ubiquitous electric vehicles. There's infrastructure, adoption rates are slow. Um, so combustion engines are gonna be around and emissions regulations are tightening. Um, and so where this technology can come in is it can be a solution now and where it fits in, um, in terms of your question, in terms of how this compares to traditional ignition and what are the benefits is uh, basically you're at the limits of where spark ignition can ignite in terms of fuel air mixtures and combustion strategies you just can't push spark ignition any further. And spark ignition really hasn't changed in you know, over 100 years. Uh, this technology will allow you to burn, for example, a very lean mixture. So uh, uh, air fuel ratios, say, higher than 25 to 1. Um, and also dilute mixtures, for example, with exhaust gas recirculation. And depending on those strategies, you can see in uh, peak operational cases, fuel economy benefits as high as 20%. You can see the NOx emissions go down by more than 50%. And again, there's always gonna be a trade-off. So you can also run at higher peak powers. We've seen a few percent increase in the peak horsepower you can get out of the engine, but then you're gonna trade off um, fuel economy, for example, in that case. Um, so those are the main benefits is fuel economy improvement, uh, reduction in NOx, reduction in CO2 with the fuel economy benefit, and the faster burn is gonna allow you to access um, other potential benefits like peak horsepower as well. Yeah, yeah. Very, very cool stuff, Dan. I, I really, really enjoy it. Um, you. you know, is there anything we're missing here? Anything you want to add uh, before before we get going? Yeah, I think the main thing is, um, you know, like I said, we're sort of at the at the limits with existing ignition technology. So I've been excited to see a lot more public conversation on how advanced ignition kind of gets this last big step in improvement and efficiency in uh, in gasoline engines. So we're really excited that that has kind of left the academic conversation from maybe 10 to 15 years ago and has now become more mainstream. So we're, we're really excited about that. Yeah, you know, I couldn't agree more. It, it really feels like the future is going to be electric. But at the same time, you know, we can't just kind of sit back and let our ICE technology just kind of go along as it is we still got to keep improving this stuff and you know that's exactly what you guys are doing at transient yep. plasma systems so just cool stuff dan thank you again yeah. for joining us yeah thank you sean thanks for your time yep have a good one you too